So the first song I'm going to do is called Decency, and it's off my Tonight EP. You can find anywhere you like to listen to music. We are live. Welcome. I'm your host, Jake. We have a great show for you tonight. Christine Renner. Hello. Um, it has been a while. Do you have, like, two, three years? Do you happen to remember? Maybe four years. Really? Yeah. P so pre-COVID? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's you been were a long time. super young. Uh-huh. And I'm 23 now. I was probably 19 when Dang. I was here last. <laughs> wow. Okay. So we're going we're gonna to hear a lot of change. Yeah. A lot of change. New stuff. Lots of new okay. stuff. Okay. Um, where did you grow up? Let's, so a lot of people, you know, they see you. They don't know your history or, you know, a lot about your background. Yeah. I grew up in Austin, Texas. Uh, North Austin, kind of around Round Rock and Lakeway, back to Round Rock. Now I'm up in Liberty Hill. So... Yeah, born and raised in Austin. I love it. It's That's the best unicorn. city to be in. That's a unicorn. <laughs> Doing what I'm doing. Born, you know, a musician born here, raised here. Yep. Um, that's good. <laughs> Very good, yes. Um, and uh, what, um, when did you, like, I, I'm, I'm guessing your parents kind of influenced, uh, you know, were playing great music when mm -hmm. you were a child. Um, when did you get it? Was, was, did you start with keyboard? Did you start with guitar? What was your first instrument? 
I was keyboard. I definitely uh, started, I had, my dad showed me some chords because my dad's a musician and I just took it from there. I started writing songs as soon as I knew a chord. I was nice. like, I, I, I had lyrics I was already writing yeah. and I just started putting music to the lyrics. Then I learned guitar because I realized that uh, pianos are not portable. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Even keyboards are kind of hefty. So yeah, uh, yeah so I picked up guitar and I'm just, I love it so much. It was not, I'll say it wasn't easy at first. And yeah. I tell all my students, I'm like, give it a couple months. It's yeah. going to hurt your fingers. <laughs> now, is it better? Like, did you start on electric or acoustic? And what's like, what's the difference? What would you suggest? I would say to start on acoustic because it's harder than electric. In, oh. You'll build the strength in your fingers. Mm -hmm. And then once you learn the basics, if you really want to do electric, then go into electric, but you'll have strength. And it'll be strength. an easier progression going oh, yeah. from acoustic to electric. Yeah. So the st strings just play f easier? Yeah, they're they're closer to the to the fretboard. They're oh, just nice gotcha. and slinky. Acoustic guitar is a little thicker mm -hmm. overall. <laughs> the, the, the strings are even thicker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, just feel, they're like tighter, I feel like, yeah. <laughs> and so from a young age, you, or obviously you liked it, but when it, when did you think, you know, this could really be something? I had seen Carrie Underwood pl play in an arena, I feel like in San Antonio or something, and I saw her fly around the arena oh, in a God. pickup truck, yeah. and I was like, I want to <laughs> do that. You can do that? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, not that I want to be on a pickup truck, yeah. but I want to fly around yeah. an arena and like sing songs I wrote. Pink and, does that well, too. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I want to do that. And it, I, ever since I've been a little frustrated with like how to get there, you know, yeah. like the journey of being an independent artist is, it can be really tricky of not knowing what to do next yeah. and like, uh, <laughs> like having to handle like a million things at once. I, I am my own record label in a sense. Yeah, so. you're, you're <laughs> you know, your your Instagram, you're your, what do you call that? Your social, you know. All manager. Your manager, yeah. <laughs> I am my and own manager. by the manager. way, let's give out, what is your uh, Instagrams and stuff? Christine Renner Music. Christine with a C-H, yeah. And then Renner spelled the same backwards and then music. And that's me everywhere, so. Facebook, TikTok, website. You'll find you there. You'll find me yeah. all around. So from a very young age, you might have been a dreamer. Yeah. yeah of sorts. And want to be a musician. You like how I worked <laughs> out? Um, and um, so, okay. How, uh, I'm sure your parents were obviously, uh, you know, positive with this. Oh, yeah. My, yeah. my dad's Supported. dream was the same, to do yeah. like arenas yeah. and stuff. So I'm living out his dream now. And uh, and my mom grew grew me up listening to all kinds of fun 80s music, uh, 70s music, and just, we were a very musical family. We have a lot of fun with Brothers music. and sisters? Yeah, I have a brother, I have a sister, and my little sister, she's 13, Julia. Hi. Now, <laughs> now so clearly she sees you. <laughs> Does she, like, get the bug to, you know, want to play music, or is she like, oh, yes, that's cool? Yes, she's so talented, but she feels like music is, like, Sissy's thing, and so oh. she wants to be an actress. Okay. <laughs> she is funny. Yeah, so someone step on funny. your toes. There you go. Maybe someday we'll have funny. her out here as an actress. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> we'll, we'll get you out here somewhere, somewhere sister. Um, all right, so um, what kind of... Uh, you know, musical diet did your parents put you on? Um, well, all kinds. Um, definitely from my mom, we loved Billy Squire together and all just all kinds of 80s. And my dad got me into Led Zeppelin, Rush, and then I got Heavy myself stuff. into Beatles. Um, did and you have you seen the, the newest? Uh, uh, Beetle thing on Apple. You mean the Paul McCartney? Well, no, thing? Paul McCartney three two one is really good I've too. I've seen. I think. Oh, okay. But this was actual footage. The get back. Yes. Yes, I did see that, or most of it, because it's long. Yes, it is. Like, <laughs> I have yeah. trouble staying up for movies. No, it's yeah, <laughs> like three hours. But it's so cool to see their the writing process. Yes. And so before cool. those songs were formed, when they're just like, "Hey guys, what do you think about this?" And they're like, yeah. you know, the long and winding road. And what about? You know, I saw you, st you know, it's just so crazy to see their thought process. Right. Especially as a musician, I'm sure that's like super exciting. Oh yeah, because they're some of the best songwriters ever, I feel so. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Favorite Beatle. Oh, John Lennon, but Paul McCartney. Mm -hmm. But I just, <laughs> that's too tricky. I know, I know. But yeah, like my, 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 
fun side of my songwriting is definitely Paul McCartney. Yeah. He's very he's a, such a pop. comical yeah. and like m like he's telling a story. Yeah. John Lennon is so emotional, and that's the other side. And of George that. Harrison has all the talent. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> he's the one that actually taught them. Really? Like he taught them chords and yeah. Oh wow. And he was the youngest, ironically. Wow. But he did the slide. Anyway, if you I, if He's, I ask you what your favorite Beatles songs were, a lot of them would probably be Harrison songs. Yeah, that's true. And I like him. And I like Ringo I like too. Big, big, yeah, Ringo has some good ones. <laughs> he has some good ones. I like I like Harrison also because he wrote on his own. The, the other guys kind of did their Together, own. Together, Lennon, they, McCartney. Harrison stuff. didn't need any help. He wrote yeah. all of his songs on his own. But yeah. <laughs> I'm a I'm a Harrison fan. Um, and uh, so, you know, we met you before. COVID, I've been following you. You're really good about keeping up to date on your socials, always posting little fun videos. Um, what did, cause you were building steam mm -hmm. or you are building steam and COVID hit. Uh, yeah. What happened? <laughs> so what happens then? I was official South by Southwest artist for the first time. In 2020, 2020. and then they canceled it. <laughs> yeah, I had 10, I somehow oh. got my bandmates, there's four of us, uh, so I somehow got them who are all in like nine other bands mm -hmm. to agree and be available oh. for 10 shows that week. For you, ten. yeah. And um, yeah, so I just, since then, it's also, it. it's kind of a miracle that I got into South By. Uh, it's kind of a tale that it's tricky to get in if you're an Austin artist because you're kind of already oh, here. They, yeah. Unless you've like kind of broken the... Yes. Thre there's some yeah. threshold and yeah. so I haven't been official since but um also I know that you know they there's been a whole thing about paying the musicians enough to oh. um <laughs> that's do, important do they pay so. the out-of-towners for coming in but not the locals um I don't know I don't think it's any different it's oh, okay it's, yeah but it's like it's, everybody gets it's screwed like you the get, same exactly yeah <laughs> equally <laughs> equally exactly yeah yeah but, you know, I mean, it's a pretty good platform. It is. It's a yeah, great, it yeah. is, definitely. I wish I got to play it. <laughs> so, how, by the, so speaking of, because I don't know, and you do, what is the process with South By? You have to, like, what's the, what's the process to try to get in there? Well, you have to pay 50 bucks to register. register. Um, and then, yeah, a, it's, it's also the sooner the better. The sooner you register, uh -huh. the better. The so are there chances. people that just, like, look at your portfolio and then pick or is it rant like here's 50 artists we're going to pick from austin and just pull out of a hat do you know i have no idea yeah, i wish okay. i knew if someone knew <laughs> yeah, someone someone hit us up and let us know who books for acl festival <laughs> that'd be a good thing to know that'd be a good thing to know all right um i'm gonna get out of the way uh intro each of your songs okay um so that we know a little bit about them or at least the title at least okay um and then we'll be back in about 15 to 17 Okay. All right. Christine Renner. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, next up is Beautiful Days. And this song, gosh, I love to play this song. It's a lot of fun. And I want to um, say this song is for Ariel Clark. I love you. I know you're watching.
This is a newer song. It's called Glitter. Yeah, all right. It is about the horrors of the music industry I've experienced. So, girls, guard your heart and bring somebody with you wherever you go.
Thank you. All All right, I'm going to take it down a notch. And this is a pretty brand new song. Um, Only like my second time playing it live. So this is called Late Night. Ah, For Up Late Austin. Oh. should be sleeping baby darling won't you hold me close there's no rush we have no place to go some good stuff thank you've you. been writing <laughs> been doing yeah. some stuff since i saw you last <laughs> all right that's always good um let's talk about because you put a lot of effort into this little scenery yeah, here let's uh talk it up a little bit what do you got going on here uh it's my garden yeah. <laughs> it's my garden of eden nice. <laughs> maybe a shot of it yeah um you like the flamingos i assume yes i just like 
started to have an obsession with them. I think they're so cute and they're pink, mm -hmm. uh, but they uh, stand for balance. So it oh. reminds me to, to find balance in life and all things and uh, femininity and just mm -hmm. emotions and expressions. So I love the flamingos. And then my earth. Yeah, because I, you're going to be global. Yeah, <laughs> and I love everybody on this earth. I love there everybody. Go. So. There you go. That's a, that's a lot of people. That's a big <laughs> statement to love everybody on earth. That is true. I mean, that's I try to, but you know, it's a little hard sometimes with the way people are. All right, so okay, we got that out of the way. Um, speaking of people, um, so sometimes we see you out with the band. Who? Mm -hmm. How did you form that band? Who's in the band when you play with the band? Yeah, um, it's been a lot of trial and error. There's been um, a lot of Christine Renner band lineups oh, over the years. Yep, yeah, okay. lots of uh, you know drama things, yeah. people quitting, all the yep. things, and that's how it goes. You know, as a solo artist, and part, isn't part that like everybody's in five other bands? Yeah, <laughs> are you in any other bands, by the way? Um, no, but I uh, might join my guitar player's band. See, there you go. His band is also my band. Like it's oh, it we're just cross contaminating. Gotcha. Our yeah, musicians, there you go. There you go, there you go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, my band right now consists of uh, Devin North on the bass, yep, I like him. Cole Kenning on the drums, yep. and Anthony Bassini on guitar. He was really here good. a couple yes, weeks ago. Yes. Yeah, I like all your people. Yeah, oh, you I love them so much. <laughs> uh, so this, you set this up because like you've all played together and you all know each other. Or do you seek each other? How did you get these guys? Uh, well, yeah, I've known Devin for a long mm -hmm. time. Uh, we worked at the same school of music like s six years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I've just known him. And then yeah. at one point, um, it was I had him fill in for a gig. And then I was like, oh, I'm hiring you. <laughs> so uh, and then he's kind of been the guy that I go to. I'm like, hey, I need a drummer. or I need mm -hmm. somebody. And he just gives me a yeah. plethora of numbers of people and he rates them. He's a human <laughs> Rolodex. He's a human Rolodex of musicians. That's so, good. That's good. So he's like, this is a five star drummer. I'm like, yeah. sweet. <laughs> um, also, let's let's do a little bit of name dropping here. I know you've been performing out there. Uh, the 310. Yeah. How, how'd that, well, how'd that yeah, go? I opened up for my good friend Ariel at the 310 uh, ACL Theater. That was really cool. Um, and then. Now, where is that? That is underneath the ACL Moody Theater. Theater. Okay. And then there's the 310. There's so many Moody's. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and ACL things. Uh huh. Wait, wait, what? Yeah. Okay. And then I did play outside of the Moody Center. So the uh, outside of the arena on the Hulu stage. Uh, right before Bon Jovi played. So as all of Bon Jovi's fans were, were going up to you know get their mm -hmm. seats, get their tickets, they got to see me perform. And that was a really good performance too. I thanks, that yeah. yeah. That was really yeah. good. Not really too shabby. <laughs> um, let's uh, go into, I know back in the day, cause like you've been doing this for a while. Mm -hmm. um, you, how did you get the Oklahoma um, <laughs> record label? I'm going oh way back. Oh my God, that's way back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I did, so quick, long story short, I did a, t a talent, uh, it, like was like a talent competition. Okay. And where you, and it was for acting, modeling, and singing, and you perform, you do all these things for this, this whole week, and there's like 90 executives, managers, agents, mm. in the audience, and if they want to work with you, they give you a callback. Okay. And I was 12 at the time, big dreams. Mm -hmm. I saw, I was like, arena stages, I was like, mm -hmm. let's do it. I was ready, a Nickelodeon star, come on, where's, yeah, where's yeah. my iCarly deal? Yes, yes. <laughs> and I got zero callbacks. And it was pretty devastating for me at that time because I, you know, I s felt and saw my destiny before right. I even stepped right. into it. Right. And so uh, I was relentless and I put in my business card and my demo into every single agent and mm -hmm. producer's box. And uh, I did get a call from this little record label that's gone under now, but I got the opportunity at 13 years old to make an eight song album of original music. Well, so. that was something real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's the name of it. <laughs> yeah. Literally and yeah, figuratively. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that was the way back when uh, you progressed. Uh, wh what's the, do you have a record label now? You do an independent? What's. Yeah, okay, okay. yeah, still independent, still just me. And so she's available. <laughs> and uh, my dad helps me a lot because I'm a, I'm a creative and my mm -hmm. brain just wants to my, make make songs, write songs, color all day. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> he helps me kind of get in line with the business side yeah, and yeah. Um, 
and I've got a lot of help now too. I've got a creative director who nice. you, she would have been here, Patty Curry. I want to give a shout out to her. Uh, she does my makeup and does mm. my styling, and you know any photo shoots and videos. She helps me with all of that. So okay, yeah. So I got a little bit of a team going, uh, but you know, still completely on my own, yeah. independent. And, and so I, when did Tonight and Heartbreaker? Yeah, so Tonight EP I did when I was 19 uh, in 1920, and that came out, and that was... Pre-COVID, right around COVID? Yeah, right before... Because COVID was March 2020. Okay, yeah, right before. That, that was definitely before, and then I did the Heartbreaker EP. I recorded it right, like, right in the before it was not okay to get in a room with oh, other yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we recorded it, and then I was like, well, dang, I have this awesome record um, that I want to do a show for. Like, I want to have a party yeah, for this. Yeah. So once it, COVID was over, I waited it out, and as soon as it was like okay to do shows, I did a really cool release show and um, it, on my birthday. And yeah, since then, I have been writing and writing, going through all of life throws at me. <laughs> and I finally... And turn it into a song. Yeah, and I finally have a new song coming out. Um, is, it, is this... Wait, hold on. Is this the secret? Yeah, sh don't okay. tell anyone. <laughs> this is the Are we secret. ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? <laughs> I, hold on, everybody. She's about to spill the beans here. <laughs> yeah, I am uh, finally going to release my next single... It's called Dreamer. I have it tattooed right here. I've had it tattooed on me for so long. I knew I was going to make an album called Dreamer. Mm -hmm. I had it on uh, the tattoo before I even wrote the song. And then I was like, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. I just knew that like, a I'm a dreamer. I'm, I'm yeah. a dreamer. It just feels so. And so I finally wrote the song and um, recorded it with uh, Chris Frenchie Smith, my producer. He also uh, produced Tonight in Heartbreaker EP. And the two of us went in the studio and made the song. And it's coming out on August 11th. Now, is the recording with full band or? So it has band on it, but it literally, I played everything on it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like I built the drum beat uh, and I, I love played synth bass yeah. and um, I, you know, obviously the vocals and the guitars, everything on there, I performed. Nice. Um, my producer just kind of, Frenchie helped with, with sound choices yeah. and like we explored the Juno keyboard. There's so many mm -hmm. fun sounds. And, uh, I had my, uh, Juno one as well, which is my dad's vintage from the eighties. And we did a lot of, uh, a lot with that that keyboard yeah. too. So there's like vintage eighties feel in there so too. So the dreamer <laughs> is CD or single? Single. Single. Okay. Yep. Just one song. Yeah. Um, there is going to be more, but making music is very expensive. So, and are, and are you going to play it tonight? I am. I'm going to play right, it next. Right. I'm going to play. Oh, uh, did we need to switch into acoustic? Yes. I'm going to switch into acoustic now. Um, and as you do that, uh, I will kind of talk and ask you about your songwriting process. Okay. Oh. You want me to hold that? You want, you want to hold this one yeah. for a second? Yeah. I have to switch, take the strap off. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm the roadie now. <laughs> Been there, done that. Okay. I like your little strap. Thank you. A little rock and roll Joan Jettish looking. Thing. Yep. Um, oh yeah, when you're done. Uh, songwriting process, are you a lyrics girl first, or you have a tune and then you write the lyrics once you have a tune? Uh, and a it melody. really depends um, on the, the day. The, but yeah, yeah, sometimes I'll write lyrics and then eventually bring it to, um, bring it to music. Uh, but most of the time, I'm at the keyboard or at mm. my guitar, and I already have a key in mind mm -hmm. and a chord progression happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I just start mumbling things. Yeah. And whatever I mumble ends up being like some existential like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thing that I didn't know that yeah. I was going through or needed healing from, like deep trauma. And right, then I'm like, right. oh, whoa, that's what I didn't know I felt that. <laughs> yeah. And then <laughs> you fill the in the blanks and, and yep. sh sharpen it up. Yeah, nice. exactly. All right. Uh, I'm going to get out of your hair. We got, uh, you're going to do another 15 or so minute set. Yeah. And then we'll come back and talk a little bit more. Okay. All right. Christine Sounds Renner. Good.
All right. Yeah. Gosh, I love this guitar. I've had it since I was 13. Um, it was a, yeah, a Fender. It was probably only like 100 or $150, but it is priceless now. I've written every song on it. <laughs> and including this next one, this is my big secret that I have been holding is I have a new single coming out August 11th, and it is called Dreamer. And here it is. Okay, I'm going to play a song for my grandma and my mom. <laughs> this is a song, the first song off of my Explore EP I did when I was 16. So it's the first song I released on Spotify, really. Uh, it's called Crazy, and it's a family favorite. <laughs> Good. 
next song is my most recent single I released in December. It's called Drinking Coffee. And I don't like coffee, but <laughs> it's a metaphor for love. I've seen my parents have their morning coffee together for the past 30 years, so I hope to have a love for that long as well.
This song is dedicated to my friend Grace. She requested it. And I'll say I probably won't release this one until the next, next album, because I want to make a whole album based off of this song. And I want to call it Eden, uh, just like my little garden I created around here. <laughs> this is called Eden. Walked for 
for miles and miles Lost love and held on to denial In time it will all be crashing down I always think back to Thank you, Jake. We'll see you guys next week. Up late. Bye, friends. <laughs>